So good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. Hope you're all having a good evening. Obviously, we're not having the best of market conditions, and we know tomorrow could be pretty volatile as well. But <clears throat> I wanted to take some time tonight to talk about um, the use of credit spreads. And one of the reasons that that has been working so well um, for us in, in right way options. And let me give you a little bit of history here um, when it comes to credit spreads. Anybody trade credit spreads and just felt like they just don't work? Um, anybody had any experience with them? Or you went to some class sometime and, and they told you that, boy, credit spread, selling premium, that's the only way to make money in the market. You got to sell premium, otherwise you're just missing the boat. Um, I don't know there's so much misinformation out there I think about credit spreads and people get caught up in some well some really bad thought processes thought processes on credit spreads but one of the reasons that is is because they're not being used correctly um, Lawrence, well, actually they work really good in volatile markets as well. And let me give you just a little bit of history here. When I first started trading, um, I started out very small account. I opened up my first account for 2,500 bucks and that was a stretch, you know. I was running a business, I was in my mid 20s. I had two, two if you're getting an Echo EV, you might be logged into two different rooms. Um, or something like that or you may just need to refresh your screen click that um, arrow over there the double circle and refresh your screen um, so <clears throat> I started trading stock and, and then eventually thought well I wasn't doing very well in stock so I thought well the answer must be um, over in um, credit spreads and I took some classes. I, I went and ended up signing up for a service for a class. I'm not going to tell you the service name. It doesn't matter because um, the service is gone and broke and out of business. But um, what happened was we were convinced that this person had it all figured out. They had it all figured out in credit spread trading and that, um, boy, all we had to do, boy, it was almost a no-lose situation. And, and it was for about six months. And in that six month, um, essentially everyone in the service um, ended up broke because the perceptions, the things that we were told about credit spreads were just wrong. And um, a lot of people lost their entire account. Um, um, I, didn't, I didn't lose my entire account, but it was the biggest loss, single one trade loss that I've ever had in my trading. And I learned a lot that day. I, um, I just about gave up on credit spreads, um, as a matter of fact. But what I ended up doing was just, um, I'm kind of stubborn, and so I dove back into it. I thought, there's got to be a, something's wrong here. Um, um, you and broke on 90-10 spreads? Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of the same, um, same thing that this person was teaching and, and, and it was just a horrible situation. I mean, like I said, the, the entire service, it, it broke everybody. Um, and the service ended up closing just shortly after. The thing I learned about credit spreads is really the same thing for any trade situation that you set up. When we look at, at uh, markets and we look at trades, one of the things we kind of get caught up in all the time is we get caught up in the fancy. You know, we get caught up in the sexy part of things. We get caught up in, um, oh, this indicator has to flip over this indicator and this one needs to do a backflip and 
you know, all of that kind of stuff. Or we, you know, we can just, we don't have to worry too much about price action because they say, you know, the only thing that really works in, in the market is selling premium. So I don't even really have to think about it. I could, I could put credit spreads on any trade. And most people who go down that path will soon come out the other end and say, you know, credit spreads don't work. It's not worth doing. Um, they, 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 they just don't work. Well, they do work and they work out just fine if they're traded correctly. And what I mean by correctly is we have to study the chart. And I know that's really <clears throat> kind of an unpopular thing to say nowadays with all the algorithms and people guaranteeing you that they can just send you a trade and you can just blindly follow it and everything's going to work out. Well, how many in this room is that working out for you? I mean, honestly, of all the folks in here, we've got 200 folks in here just blindly following somebody else's algorithmic trade. How's that working for you? Probably not so good, right? And what we need to do is we need to think about the process of a credit spread. And um, it's really not as hard as you might think. Now, credit spread is designed. Um, we have, um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about true credit spreads where we bring in a credit. So there's a bull put credit spread and there's a bear call credit spread. I mean, uh, yeah, that's right. Bull put credit spread, bear call credit spread. And in that situation, we have to place those trades correctly. I mean, it took me a while to figure this stuff out. So I'm going to give you some basic rules. I'm not going to go over and teach you how to trade options. That's not the purpose of this class. I want to get into the details of placing the credit spread trades. Um, but I'm going to give you some of the rules that I follow. And, and I know some of you are going to argue with this. Some of you don't want to do this. Hey, that's fine. Um, keep doing what you're doing um and keep getting what you're getting you know the thing the thing that i find so interesting is that we don't want to follow a set of rules we don't want to just just point me to the trade i don't want to have to think about it well i've never seen anybody be successful in trading with that kind of attitude we have to dig into the trade so first off i'm going to say with credit spreads pretty simple we're going to be looking at some rules. We want to be putting all of our credit spread trades on before we reach 30 days to expiration, okay? We can start looking for those credit spreads somewhere between 50 and 45 days. Now, I prefer about 45 days to expiration, okay, to start looking for those credit spreads, okay? And then we want to make sure that we're buying the right options okay um no we don't send out these webinars joe um sorry but um it will probably be posted to the youtube channel here eventually okay <clears throat> so um if you want to um look for those credit spreads we're going to look in this time period and i know people say no wait a minute i don't want to i don't want to be in it i don't want to be in a credit spread that's that long I, why can't i use a weekly use a weekly and see how it works for you you're pretty soon going to come back to the case well that just doesn't work that well okay um <laughs> and there's specific reasons for that the next thing we want to do is we want to look for um, the time. How much, uh, first we got the time, how, um, how much premium do we want to collect? I want to collect at least one third of the spread as a credit. Okay. So if it's a, if it's a $1 wide spread, guys, this is pretty simple math. If the credits, um, if the spread is $1 wide, how much credit do we need? We need a minimum of 33 cents, and we hope to do better than that, right? We want 33 cents or more, greater than 33 cents to do the credit spread. And there's some very specific reasons on this. If you do, let's just do, let's just dumb this down a little bit because I've had a lot of people say, well, um, 30 cents is fine. Okay, let's go 30 cents and let's do a little bit of math. 
if we buy a, a put on a credit spread and we use some good rules and one of the rules that I'm going to ask you guys to follow is the option that you sell the option that you sell will always be very near 30 deltas or even less 30 deltas out of the money okay now the reason that is the case is that's 30 deltas the math the 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 um the delta is telling us that there is a 70 percent chance that that option will expire worthless okay so with a 70 percent chance of options expire expiring worthless over enough um, repetitions of that means i should win about seven out of ten trades right so let's do just a little bit of math if i take a 30 cent credit spread and I lose on three $1 wide credit spreads. How much do I lose, guys? See, if I take a $30 credit spread, I have 70 at risk, right? How much am I losing on three credit spreads? Thank you. If I make 30 cents on seven credit spreads, how much do I make? Thank you, 210. How many of you guys wanna work all month? Work hard all month to end the end of the month with zero. That's winning 70% of the trades and still coming out zero. This is why people say credit spreads don't work because they don't place the trades correctly and they don't use proper placement of the credit spread, okay? They never put themselves in a advantaged position in the trade, what I call a defensible position in a trade, okay? So looking at this math, guys, looking at this math and know all credit spreads fit this same math, okay? Do we have to have an exit plan on every single one of these? And do, can we just arbitrarily throw credit spreads at the market and expect to win? No. Yeah, we're going to have to work at this, right? <coughs> we, can't, we can't spend an entire month on, on trading something like this and come out even. So how do we do this? We know we should have a 70% opportunity to win these trades, but what that means is we can never be working or try to never have maximum losses on the three. Okay. What's the other reality in credit spreads? The other reality in credit spreads is people, once they get into the credit spread, they want it all. They want a 100% win. How many of you guys have had credit spreads on that had nice winning percentages but ended up with a loss because you didn't take profits? <clears throat> okay. So a few simple rules that you have to follow. One of those is we have to place the trades correctly. We have to make sure we have an exit plan before we enter the trade because we can't take three maximum losses. Okay, so we have to have an exit plan before we enter the trade. And then we have to have a plan to take profits. Okay, how are we going to start winning more trades? You know, it's funny to me because people will sometimes ask me almost as, as if I need to give them permission on trades. Hey, I have, I have a 20% profit on a trade. Should I take the profit? Can you guys go broke taking 20% gains? No. 
Now, part of my story that I was telling you when I got started doing this, I was working full time. Um, <clears throat> I had a construction business. This was back before, you know, you had access to the internet with a cell phone and um, access to um, your brokerage and everything like that. So I was looking for a way that I could trade only being able to put together trades in the evenings way after the market had closed and put those trades into play before the market had even opened. Okay, <laughs> I started out with dial-up, yeah. And I did have AOL for a, AOL for a while. <clears throat> so I started working with some of the basics. Um, I've never been a math guy, honestly, I've never been a math guy, but the statistics of this really started to make sense. If I could place trades, manage the risk of this with, an, with a setup that gives me a 70% probability of winning, I should be able to figure out a way to put some consistency into that strategy. Okay, now I've said this to the folks on Rightway Options and, and um, this is absolutely true. I built my account with credit spreads. I was working full time, I couldn't watch the market, I couldn't do, through the day I never watched a single tick, I never watched the bell open, I never watched it close. I built my account trading credit spreads and I traded them all over the market all over the market okay because I went with a whole plan if I could win 70% of the trades I didn't put all of my eggs into one basket people will do this all the time with credit spreads well you know I just want to make a whole bunch of money and I don't want to have to work very hard so I'll put I'll put a uh, just one giant trade on here and you know win lose or draw well, how often does that work, guys, when you put all your money into one trade? It doesn't work. So what I would do is I would go around and look for small credit spreads. I kept them small. I'd do something over here in, in the financial sector. I'd do something in the tech sector. I'd do something in utilities. I would do something, you know, over here in commodities. I'd do something over here. I would put credit spreads all over the place. And it didn't matter if they were a bull put or a bear call. I could put those on sometimes at the same time in the same market. And I placed them all over the place. And I placed them with high probability in those trades with an exit plan and a plan to take profits. Consequently, my experience with credit spreads was pretty darn good. I won a lot of money over time, just in little bitty pit bits, okay? Now, I'm not suggesting you have to do what I do. You now have access to the market all the time. You can look at it all the time. I had to really look at a chart prior to the, you know, after the market had closed, I had to look at a market after it had closed, place an order to put on a credit spread before the market was ever open, and I couldn't look at the pre-market or anything. Okay? So what makes a good credit spread? What makes a good defensive credit spread? Well, it's all about the chart. Okay? And I know folks want to, you know, just give me the easy button. Just tell me, just tell me where I'm gonna find winning credit spreads. Well, the right way option folks that are here listening tonight can verify that we had, we've been trading credit spreads pretty readily on the indexes and we've been doing very, very well with those credit spreads. But we've been doing well with those credit spreads. <clears throat> you know, for example, the last part of this trade that we took off here yesterday was for 80 some percent profit on the trade and the reason it worked is not because I'm a genius <laughs> you know some of the people who get successful in the market they tend to act like they're some kind of clairvoyant genius they can predict the market I, I'm not a genius guys I'm really not I'm not a guru I'm not anything anything like that I'm just a guy who is willing to look at a chart and see it for what it is, not for what I want it to be. 
See, far too often, show of hands, how many of you guys have spent most of your career in trading looking for the perfect scan, looking for the perfect setup, looking for the perfect strategy, looking for the easy button that's going to make you rich because you can now predict what happens next. See, I went through that for years, trying to predict what happens next. I can't predict the market. And neither can you and neither can all those talking heads out there yakking it up all the time on, on television. They can't. They don't know what's going to happen. I mean, if they knew what was going to happen, guys, how many of you think would have repeated the message transitory? Yep, we know what's going to happen. The market's it's transitory. No, no. See, they don't know any more than you do. As a matter of fact, if you look at a chart correctly, you can actually beat them at their own game most of the time. Because folks who spend their time trying to predict miss what's going on in the chart. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> when the diamonds was rallying back up and we were pushing into this price resistance in the chart, and we were still overall in a downtrend, I said, odds are probably in my favor that the market continues to roll lower. And the reason that is, is because the downtrend is in play. We don't have an uptrend in the market until price crosses the downtrend and holds a higher low. That's when we build an uptrend. It's the only time an uptrend gets built. It's the only time an uptrend gets established. We have to put in a higher low. We hadn't even come close to putting in a higher low. In fact, we didn't even quite make it up to the 50-day moving average as resistance in the chart. So when I say defensible in a trade, I'm looking for a trade that is placed around good, solid support and resistance levels in a chart. See, resistance does its job. I believe, and you guys can disagree with me, worked pretty well for me, um, but I believe price action is giving us clues. And see, the reason people didn't see the clue is because they wanted the market to go up. They were predicting the market had to go up. It can't go down anymore. It has to go up. Why would we be want, wanting to predict that the market could go up when the downtrend was still in play and resistance was still above? The difference, guys, the only difference that makes these credit spreads work for us in right way options is my willingness to see the chart for what it is, not for what I want it to be. Okay. And when I place a credit spread trade, I want that price action giving me good evidence, okay, that I can get this trade put together without taking a lot of risk, okay? That the chart is actually working for me, that price action is confirming this trade. So one of the things I, I, I want to insert here that I think is really important, isn't it funny when we, we, <clears throat> we've all gone through tons of classes on price action, right? We've gone through bunches of candlestick classes. We've learned everything there is to know about moving averages and indicators and all this kind of stuff. We've attained all of this knowledge. But isn't it funny when we want to make money in the market, all of the knowledge that we gained in technical analysis, we just skip that because I want a long trade. Isn't it funny how we just quickly ignore it? We have the best tool for making money in the market right in front of us, and that's price action. But oftentimes we don't look at it. We zoom the chart up and we look right here, and I want this to be up. Jim Cramer says it's going to be up. It has to be up. No, it doesn't. 
doesn't have to do anything. Jim Cramer has no bearing on what's actually happening on the internals of the market. What any of those folks say, they're talking their own position. So when we look at a trade like this, look at the chart. The chart is leaving us clues. So to give you an example of this, um, do I have it marked on here? Yeah. This was our last credit spread trade that we just closed. And this one closed, the, the final closed for about 90% profit on the trade. <clears throat> now let me show you the distinct levels, what makes this trade work, okay? And it has nothing to do with me being a genius, okay? Nothing to do that I'm smarter than anybody else in the market. You guys have all the tools to do this, okay? But what we want to pay attention to, okay, what we want to pay attention to is what is the chart showing us, the clues that are there. Now, I have no idea when I place a bear call credit spread. By the way, this red, red line is the short strike. The green line is the long strike. Anytime you see one of my charts and you see a red line and a green line and a blue line, you know that's a laid out credit spread. Okay, I don't take credit spreads until I lay them out on the chart and look at the price action of the chart. Okay, the blue line is my exit. You see, I know this to be true that if price breaks above a price resistance in the chart, what are the chances that it's going to test the next level of price resistance above there? It's high, very high. See, if I don't recognize that, I give up all of the technical analysis edge that the chart gives me. Okay, if I don't recognize that, if I don't act upon that data, the edge of technical analysis, we just threw it out. We don't pay attention to it. Okay, that can't be right. Price doesn't lie. Institutions can do play all kinds of funny business. High frequency trading firms can lie to us and cheat, do all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, guys, the entire knowledge of everyone trading a particular symbol is displayed right there on the chart for us to see. They can't hide it. The question is, are you looking for it? Are you looking at the clues that are already displayed there in the chart? So I placed this bear call credit spread. Now, here's, here's one thing. Did I know this bear call credit spread was going to work? No. No idea because I can't predict what comes tomorrow. What I do know is price action was pushing up next to this resistance, pushing up toward that resistance and the predominance of evidence on the chart says, if we crossed all the way up there, that would be kind of a miracle that we just ignored all of the price resistance and never stopped. I can't tell you, I, I had no idea that we would do this. How, how many of these traders out here that talk about they're the experts and everything will tell you, I don't have a clue what comes next. What I did know is I had a trade with a high probability with a plan to exit if I was wrong. Now, you can call that genius if you want, but honestly, it's not. It's a willingness to follow rules and a willingness to see the chart for what it is and not for what you want it to be. So for example here, when we're pushing toward the resistance of the chart, I'm placing, I'm looking for the bear call credit spread because I'm looking at all of this price resistance and I know resistance typically does its job. 
it will resist prices moving through. It's like a ceiling. It just can't punch through it. It could punch up there. It could dance or it could go sideways here. Remember guys, with a credit spread, with all the volatility of this move in here, I was never at risk of a big loss here because I had an exit. Close above there, I'm out of the trade. I take a small loss, move on, find another trade. Okay, I didn't know it was gonna fall out of bed like this. I kind of told people I, I was expecting that we weren't gonna hold up, but I didn't know it. So the best I can do is place a trade that is defendable. And I'll tell you guys, if you can become good credit spread traders, all of your other trading gets easier. Because why does this work? Does it work because I'm a genius? No. It works because I look at the chart, I evaluate the price action of the chart, and I put the odds in my favor. Resistance does its job. Support does its job, and it does it over and over and over. Uh, Peter, it, does that really matter? Does it matter if you got in here or here or here? See, don't major in the minor things. What difference does it make? It was a winning trade. Remember the rules of the setup. I required this trade to provide us with a dollar sixty-five credit. Remember the rule: one third of a five dollar wide spread. One third of a five dollar wide spread. So I put this trade in and I actually waited. The stock was still moving up before we got filled on the trade. Because I've learned to respect the price action of the chart. But the price action is giving me clues, okay? And that wasn't intended to be mean, Peter, or anything like that, but you know, people, people come to a class like this, and, and, and I'm telling you the honest truth. In trades like this, and, and then, you want, you, then you want to nitpick the thing apart because you want to try and perfectly time the trade the next time it comes around. You're not going to do that. You're never going to do that. The perfect trade sets up when we're approaching price resistance in a chart, I can have a line of defense that is logical. Price action, line of defense. I don't, I don't even know. Um, we weren't in it 10 or 10 days or something like that, maybe a little bit more. Something like that, maybe a little few more days, I don't know. Wasn't very long. But again, does it matter? With a credit spread, we could be in it until the end of the month and still make a 100% return as long as it doesn't break through our line of resistance, right? Doesn't matter. The credit spread gives me the ability, notice right in here, guys, the Dow, had a 700 point range between the high and the low in that consolidation, 700 points. Okay, that's an awful lot of volatility. Trading to trade a directional trade in here was almost impossible, but it was that high volatility that gave us the opportunity to do this credit spread. And put this thing far enough away because the volatility was high, put this thing far enough away that I could defend the position. There's sometimes credit spreads I have to hold almost all the way to the end. Sometimes, well, a lot of times so far this year, we've made a ton of money doing this, right, RWO guys? Because we're placing these charts, 
we're placing that volatility into our favor. Okay. I start looking for all my credit spreads somewhere around 45 days. Okay, I want to have them all in place by 30 days. I always want the short strike to have a delta of around 30. I'll go 31, 32, 33 sometimes, depends on the chart. If I have a really good setup, I will not go 35, 36, 37 deltas. Okay? Because every delta I go past there diminishes my odds of winning. Okay. Well, price action. Price action determines volatility. Okay. Um, credit spreads work really, really well. Um, if you look at implied volatility on any trading platform, implied volatility of options, if you look right in here, the diamonds options, about 30% implied volatility. Okay, from the price levels we are, if you look right here in these July contracts and look right across here, that means the Dow has a plus or minus $20 it could move in a single day. So you can look at any stock. Um, I've traded credit spreads where implied volatility wasn't all that high. What, what's critical here, guys, you follow those rules. We're always going to be in this front month. We're looking in here. If I can't get any trades on here before the end of this month, I'm going to start looking out here, but it's too early. I'm going to give those people too much time to be right. Okay. Option volume does not matter, Doug. Option open interest matters. Option volume is how many contracts get traded throughout the day. We're not day trading here because we're trading a credit spread over the period of 30 days. Okay. So we want contracts that are actually being held. Open interest is the more important thing to be looking at here. And the credit spreads, making sure that there's enough liquidity in there that people are actually holding some options on a trade like this. Okay. So when you follow those basic rules and realize that if you trade an option that has a delta of around 30, a 30 delta, what does it tell us? The delta 30 tells us that this option, based on the math, has a 70% chance of not being in the money at expiration or a 70% chance that this trade is a winner. But we know 70% chance being a winner, if I lose out of 10 trades, three maximum losses. If I don't manage the downside of that trade, I still not going to make any money. I still have to follow some rules. I have to manage trade. So I always look for that trade that I can defend. Okay. Then I say, Hey, just all you got to do is stay underneath this price, stay underneath 340 and we're great. We're golden. One, one penny below 340 at expiration, it's a 100% win. Now let me tell you the downsides of credit spreads. And here's what messes up people more than anything, particularly today because we're set in front of our screen. If we don't have immediate gratification on a trade, we get bored with it, right? How many of you want to hold the trade for 30 days? Some folks get, you know, if the trade's going the next day the wrong direction, close the trade. Oh my gosh, close the trade. Credit spreads are boring. 
you can have a very high win-loss ratio with credit spreads if you follow the rules, but they're boring. Okay? It's not exciting. See, it doesn't matter to me in this credit spread if I have this big bullish candle on this day. That doesn't change anything with my rules, does it? As a matter of fact, it showed me that I had a loss in this credit spread. But do I have a loss in the credit spread? Remember, guys, when you take the credit spread, you bring in credit. I brought in $1.65 a share. The only way that becomes a loss is if I close this trade and buy it back for more money, then it's a loss. When I put this trade on, this money is in my account. Okay? So you have to follow a rule. What was the rule? Close above that blue line, and I think I had that blue line actually a little bit higher, if I'm honest. I think it was right about there. Um, <clears throat> and that's just using the price action in the chart here. Um, that and, and the, the rule was we have to close. The market is going to close with the price action above that blue bar. Because if it closes above that blue bar, the chances of us attacking that max loss potential in the trade is really high. We wanna cut the loss on this quick and just be wrong if we're gonna be wrong. It's okay. We know not every trade's going to win. Understand that going in. Not every trade's going to win. But what we also know is that the predominance of evidence here in this chart shows that we have massive level of price resistance up here. We were still below the 50-day moving average on that chart. The evidence was there. I had a downtrend that was still in play the downtrend, the price resistance, the technicals of the chart said there was a massive level of resistance up here that could and would likely resist the price just popping straight up through there. Okay. No, Vin, I don't. What I said is a close above that blue line. Okay, we can have chart pop up and pull back in the intraday. We're doing that a lot here lately, right? Where we get these big pops in the morning and then pull back almost immediately. I want, <clears throat> if we close up here, we've broken this resistance, right? We've broken the resistance. So what happens when we break resistance? Eric, no. That is the stop loss. That's the cutoff point. Trade. This is the short strike. This is the long strike. To avoid maximum risk or lo large losses in credit spreads, we have to have an exit plan before we enter the trade. Okay. Do I roll the trade? Typically, no. Because what does it mean to roll the trade, Mike? When you roll the trade, what are you usually doing? Taking a loss on the trade and then trying to pick up some more credit to the upside. But you've added loss to the trade. You've taken a loss in your account if you roll it. Yeah, you can get extra time. And hope you're right. But how many times does that work for you, Mike? In fact, how many times would you say that when you rolled the trade and tried to get fancy with the situation, that the technical analysis was wrong? And that's what we're talking about here. The technical analysis was wrong. If we break resistance, we break resistance. Why would I want to add to a bad trade? The chart is spoken, right? Close the trade. Be wrong.
Okay, why do we place this trade? I'm not trying, I don't want to sound like I'm getting frustrated, but in a way, I feel like nobody's heard anything I've said today. Nobody's really heard that we use the price action of the chart to set up the trade. If the price action of the chart says that we're wrong, then be wrong. Close the trade. Okay, the price action of the chart sets the trade. Okay, yeah, I rarely hold the expiration <clears throat> on trades. Um, initially, when I was trading credit spreads and little tiny credit spreads all over the market, I usually use the rule anytime I got above 25%. Okay. Anytime I got above 25% profit in the trade, there was no reason, there was no excuse for me not to take that profit. See, the, the market was trying to give me money. And because of my greed, I wanted more. I wouldn't take a 25% win. Think about that, guys. I can close a 25% win and have a win, a guaranteed win, close it. But I let greed get in the way of taking profits. Okay. So remember those rules that I talked about. The reason people fail so much at credit spreads is they're, first they're throwing out their technical analysis. They spent all of this time and money to study charts. And then when it comes time to place a credit spread, we ignore it completely. We don't look at the support and resistance and trend. Think about it. How many people got caught in this sell-off here? Because you'd bought into the whole idea that the market has to go back up. Okay, it has to go back up. It can't keep going down, it's gone down too far. There's no rule that says that. None whatsoever. See, what we did though, is we ignored, because we wanted the market to go up, we ignored the downtrend, we ignored the price resistance, we ignored the technical technicals in the chart because we wanted the market to go up. The technicals were all there, they told us, Okay. Uh, Mike, I can't remember for sure. I think we took, you guys, um, RWO folks might be able to tell me a little bit better. We took some of the first profits off at the 20 to 30% range, some of the first profits off. Took some more profits off the next day um, in the, I wanna say it was a little bit higher in the 50, around 50% 50 range. And I took the last part of the trade off yesterday um, at 80 and 90 percent profit on the trade okay but do, it doesn't matter okay it, it doesn't matter kg did the right thing for him if he took the whole trade off right here and took 30 percent i want to shake his hand because you're going to be a winning trader if you keep doing that Guys, we've got to get past this idea that we're going to pick the perfect entry and we're going to make the maximum money on every trade. Our job is to make money. It's not to be right. Our job is to follow the price action of the chart. The chart's giving us clues and allow the market to give it, put ourselves in a position where the market can give us money. And it doesn't matter to me, I would rather take a trade off green than take it off red. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? Don't get greedy. Don't try to be perfect on every trade. Don't worry about that. Let the chart tell you where the stock wants to go. 
and learn to follow the chart. Don't predict it. Follow the chart. And that's been the, the reason for the success this year and these credit spreads. And with all of this volatility, we've been navigating this quite well in right way options. We've been making some really good money with these credit spreads. But, and I'll get this question 100 times a day probably, we'll take off a trade. Where, where, where's the next trade? When's the next trade? Okay, the next trade is when it sets up. Right? The next time is when the, the price action sets up for the trade. I can't tell you when that's going to be. Okay, when I look at charts, I look at charts a little bit differently than a lot of people do, but I can tell you that serves you well, even in directional trades, because there was no way, in fact, I repeat, how many times did I say this in the room, guys? Be careful going long, don't go long, don't over trade, don't get long, don't over trade this long market in this rally. And why was that? Because of all of this evidence. I repeated it over and over and over. We can't get long this market until the downtrend breaks and we can actually place a higher low. That establishes a trend. Everything else suggests that we're going back down until that occurs. Okay. I don't just strictly look at trend, Robert. I look at support and resistance in the chart. Oh no, all the credit spreads and a down spread? No, why, why do the credit spreads work really well here? Because of the, uh, the volatility. Have you, have you guys found it very, very difficult to trade because of this wild volatility? Very high risk on every trade that you're taking. I'm choosing to use credit spreads because it reduces my risk. It gives me a separation away from the trade. No, I sell the whole thing, close the whole thing. Because this is a long position. Why would, I mean, if it's going down and I'm making money on it and I close the short position, I'm losing money on this position. Because remember, the way the credit spreads work is that theta, time decay, is decaying on both of these options. So when I close the trade, I want to close the entire trade so I can stop all the theta decay on the position. Okay. Now, when you're looking, looking at charts, look at charts a different way. Every time, I, I do a lot of individual coaching, and I shouldn't say every time, but most of the time when we talk, I talk to folks and we review trades, I ask them what kind of trades they're looking at, and they'll say, well, I really, I really like um, Domino's Pizza today, DPZ. And they look at Domino's Pizza like this. Wow, look at that. That's a beautiful set. That's a beautiful chart. I agree. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. As long as you don't look over here. Anybody think Domino's has some work to do before it can even prove it can break that resistance right there? How about this here? Can we break out of that downtrend and show some bullishness that can follow through. This is thing's got some work to do. I'm not saying it's not bullish, it's bullish. But see, the problem is we're ignoring what the chart's telling us. We're trying to predict something without all of the information that the chart has to give us. Okay, so when I look for charts, take a look at a chart like we looked at this earlier today, PayPal. PayPal has sold off tremendously. What if we looked for a credit spread in here? If we notice right in here, would you guys agree 
that's a pretty big level of price support, right? Pretty big level. So if we could get a credit spread in here that's down below this area, this would be a bull put credit spread. If we could get a credit spread down in here that follows the rules, somewhere between 45 and 30 days to expiration, somewhere around um, 30 deltas for the short strike, somewhere in the range of one third of the spread as a credit, Would it be logical to think with all of this price action in here that we could put on that bull put credit spread and see PayPal hold this support and start bouncing up? Yeah, it's entirely possible that if that bounces up and takes off up here, this is a potential 100% winner trade. Potential. Okay, but what if that trade doesn't do what we think it's going to do? What if this support doesn't hold and the stock falls down through here? What do you think the chances of our short strike being attacked now? Very high, right? Very high. And that's why this right here, I'd probably pull that down just a little bit to be right underneath that price action. And I would say there's the cutoff on the trade. If the trade falls below that level, close this credit spread. But see guys, all it has to do is be one penny above that number right there to be a 100% winner at expiration. If we have our timing anywhere close to correct on this and PayPal bounces off, can you guys see the double bottom that's setting up there? There's the double bottom. Now I'm not going to tell you that I know that this is going to bounce off of here. Heck, this is still working its downtrend, right? I have no idea if it's going to go. What if it just goes sideways here? This trade still wins. See, a properly priced credit spread where you use the chart price action in your favor. Think about it, guys. With you, When you take a long call trade, you buy a call option. How do you win with a long call? Stock has to go up, doesn't it? If it goes sideways, we lose. If it goes down, we lose. In the credit spread, all this has to do is stay above that short strike. It can go sideways and we win. It can go up and we win. The only way it loses is if this goes lower and that's when we close it. No, I don't use a percentage. I use, I use the option delta and the credit. I can't tell you if I can look at PayPal Pal, and see if there'd even be a credit worth taking in here. Okay, I don't know that. I haven't looked at that. I'm just saying there's a potential setup here. No. No, you're overthinking it, B. Robert. I mean, you're way overthinking it. What did I just say about price support? If price support works, this holds and this trade wins. If price support fails, chances of a maximum loss trade on this is huge. Close the trade. The price support evidence tells us that. Doesn't have the, the chart doesn't care about an 8 ATR. Doesn't care about that at all. It never will. Okay. Yeah, and if you want to wait for the higher low, I've got no problem with that. If you want to wait 
and see that this double bottom works because I don't know if it's going to work. Wait for the bottom to break. Wait for the trend to break. Put in the higher low. Put in your bull put credit spread. Fine. You can do that over and over and over. Wait for the trade to do its thing. Bounce up. All of these lows in here that put in the higher low is a potential bull put credit spread as we move up in trends. We pull back. We hold trend. Bull put credit spread underneath. It moves away. We win. Every time it rallies up to price resistance, think about this, guys. It rallied up to this price resistance. What do you think the chances, if we'd have put a bear call credit spread up here, that'd have been an easy winner, right? What about right here? Rallied up to price resistance. Put a bear call credit spread up here. It's an easy winner. Never even went on past there. Never went past here. Easy. The thing is, guys, you're not, you're trying to get too fancy on these trades. You're trying to, you're still trying to predict something. You're trying to have the perfect entry. I'm telling you, price action is the best entry you'll ever have. Price support and resistance combined with trend will turn your trading around. How many in right way options have been around long enough that would, Type a Y and agree with that. How that's turned your trading around by understanding those three simple concepts. Move with the chart rather than predict the chart. Move with the chart rather than predict the chart. Okay, price is giving us the clues. We're choosing to apply all of these arbitrary things out there that may or may not that, think about it guys all the people trading PayPal if they decide this is going to be support who am I to say it has to set a higher low it has to do anything else nobody cares the chart won't care What we do know is we could maybe put on a trade. You might want to wait for a bullish candle. You might want to wait for whatever it is that you want to wait for, but utilize the, the, the price action in the chart. Remember, price action is the entire knowledge of everyone trading that chart. Okay, now here's the cool thing about learning to do this, guys. If you can start placing those trades correctly, you're going to start making more money. Okay, you can start making more money. And here's the wonderful thing. If you become a good credit spread trader, if you become a good credit spread trader, it'll change the outcome of all of your other trades. Think about it. If we become good at reading the predominance of price information to tell us where support and resistance is in the chart. Can we take advantage of that for any other strategy as well? I'm choosing credit spreads right now because of the really high volatility. Options are very expensive and they're really dangerous, right? You buy a directional call option and it can be up, you know, for the first 15 minutes of the day and then you're way down within a half an hour because of the wide range of the move and the cost of those trades. We're paying an awful lot for those options because of the high implied volatility. By being able to utilize support, resistance, and trend and do credit spreads, I'm lowering my risk dramatically. On these trades, I'm following an exit plan before I enter the trade. I know where I'm going to be out if I'm wrong. So I rarely take. It does happen because we've all done this, right? We put on a trade, looks perfect, and then the stock gaps down. We take the maximum loss on the trade, okay? It happens every once in a while, but it doesn't happen much. And the reason is, is because we use price action. <clears throat> in fact, if you pay attention, you can avoid the next earnings event. You can avoid the next thing that may create that big gap most of the time. 
okay? <clears throat> Most of the time. Now, I'm telling you this stuff, guys, and I'm not trying. I want to be very, very clear on this. I am no guru. I am no genius. Okay? This works not because of me. This works because price action works. This works because price action doesn't lie. Okay, it doesn't lie. If we're willing to look at the chart and we're willing to see those big levels in charts, we can take advantage of that. There was a, and this was some time ago, I told everyone in, in Right Way Options, I said, take a look at Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly is about ready to take off to the upside. And I knew that because I looked at this. This is a weekly chart, huge resistance level. What happens when a great big resistance level breaks? You usually get an unbelievable move. Right way options, folks, to verify that I told everyone about this before this trade happened. It's not because I'm a genius. It's not because I knew something that I could read a crystal ball. It's because I looked at the chart. That's it. There's no magic, no indicator, no nothing that told me that. No fancy equation, no algorithm. It's looking at the chart that told me that. As a matter of fact, I can show you on the daily chart. Where the original entry was right there come up out of that break and there it is okay so it's no genius stuff and it's nothing that you guys should hold hold me up or anyone up that shows you this kind of thing to some kind of credibility that's not there you guys have exactly the same data to work with as I do. This isn't genius stuff, but I'm telling you the genius of this kind of thing, not doesn't come from me, is that we're putting the odds in our favor. We're utilizing all of that knowledge that we collected in price action, okay? The, the knowledge is there, the, the chart is leaving us clues. And all we have to do is see them and recognize the potential and then wait. The hardest part about credit spread trading, like I said, is they're boring. You got to wait. You have to be patient. But, you know, like to know, I, I, it's not because of anything other than a tremendous work ethic to learn to see the price action like that, okay? It, that's all it is, is, is just a learned response of going through lots of charts, okay? Yeah, and we do this every single day in Right Way Options. If you wanna talk about price action, we can talk about it all the time. But it's the willingness, here's what happens guys in, in today's world. Don't tell me I have to look at a chart. Just give me, just give me the easy button that, that says this, is, this trade is gonna be the winner. That's what people want. Don't tell me I have to actually look at a chart that I actually have to hold myself responsible for evaluating the price action. I just want to turn on my computer five minutes after I come to work and I want the next winning trade to be handed to me. We're all that way. Every single one of us are. We want that to happen, but that's not the way the market works. Remember guys, the market is designed to take our money. Every single institution 
out there wants our money. Every single trader out there wants our money. The only way we can take advantage of that is by doing the job. Okay, there's no easy button to success. It just requires you to look at the chart. And here's what I would say. People will, will tell me all the time. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want to spend the time studying price action and do that. How easy is it to just work with the chart and make money other than always be wringing your hands trying to predict something? Isn't it? And it's changed your world, hasn't it, Carol? I mean, you're you're making money now in the market because you see that. And you work with it. And there's no guessing games. It doesn't require a whole bunch of prediction. As a matter of fact, Carol, you don't need to listen to any of the talking heads or try to get their advice on anything, do you? Because what you need to know is displayed in the chart. Makes no difference what anybody else has to say if the chart doesn't show it, right? Um, JT, I suppose some people traded it with a credit spread. Some people went directionally long. I remember that was back when we had a bull market. It was pretty easy being long market, long anything back then. Okay, and and this isn't odd stuff, guys. I, I do this stuff over and over and over. I do this in front of people every single day in right way options. We're making money in this market in right way option. It's not because I'm kind of uh, some kind of clairvoyant about what happens next. It's not because of anything other that I'm willing to see the chart for what it is rather than what I want it to be. And I put the odds in my favor on a trade. If the odds aren't in my favor, I keep my money in my account. I am, I'm not here to just trade to be busy. I want to put the odds in my favor on a trade. That's why I did all the study. That's why I took all the classes on candlesticks and charting and all of that is to put the odds in my favor. Not to just check it all out the door because today I want to trade. Okay. Um, see, uh, members of Rightway Options have a, um, there's a phone app that comes with the trading room. And every trade I trade, the only trades I post are the ones that I put my money in. I won't post a trade unless I put my money in it. People ask me all day long to lay out a trade for them and do all of that and we'll go through trades all different ways. Somebody else wants to take it, fine. But I don't post it as a trade unless I have my money in it. Okay? They're all posted. Win, lose, or draw, they're all posted. Okay? And you can receive them on your phone instantly for a potential trade. So guys, the reason, the reason for this class is to give you just that flavor of how the volatility of the market makes these credit spreads work really well. But if you can trade credit spreads successfully and you can start seeing those support resistance and trend levels in the chart, then everything becomes easier. You know, I've shown trades over and over and over in, in charts. Um, and I hold long-term trades and short-term trades. I'm long UNG and I've been long this thing from way back over here. Okay. I'm up huge in this position. And it's not because I'm a genius. It's because I recognize when a chart breaks a downtrend and holds a higher low that there's an opportunity that's coming in the chart. That's when right here. That's when the trend begins. 
and it never happens until that occurs. See, we can break trends like this and then never hold, come right back down. There's no high or low in here. We don't hold, we fail. It's only here when trends begin to the upside. Same thing is true for any downtrend. When a downtrend begins, it's always the same. It's after we make the lower high. That's where the downtrend begins. May not be the best time to make the trade, but that's where the downtrend begins. And it's always the same. And as long as you understand good support resistance and put that trending rule in there, it'll change your trading in every strategy. Because it doesn't require you to predict anything. It requires you to study the price action of the chart. It requires you to take qualified risk without taking extraordinary risk. It requires the chart to perform. See, institutions can't fool us. When an institution starts buying up a company, they don't do it for the short term. They can't fake it. They can fake it for a little while, get people to jump in, and if they don't want to support it, guess what they're doing while everybody's jumping in here? Everybody's chasing in here, what are they doing? Institutions are selling to them. If they can get somebody to jump, when they want to unload risk, what do you guys think was happening over here? For us to sell off like this, what happened? Institutions were selling to anyone who would buy. Anyone who would buy. Every time they could pop it up, they can get everybody to jump. Oh my gosh, we're going up. but nothing had changed. See, they can't lie to us because we hadn't turned that corner yet. We were still in a downtrend. We were still below the 50-day moving average. But they had convinced enough people that, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. I got to jump in long here. And I'll tell you guys, when I figured this out, it turned my trading around. This was the biggest mistake I made over and over and over in charts. How many have ever had that situation where you buy a trade and you almost immediately get punished? Meaning, it's like somebody's watching you. You pull the trigger on the trade and it almost immediately becomes a loss. That's a result of buying stocks at price resistance. or trying to short stocks at price support. Okay. So what I do is I have this rule and it's really simple. I only buy stocks that are in a trend and have proved a higher low. Price is near price support. That's the only time I'll buy long positions. I will, will be working with the trend, and I wanna be working with the trend of the overall market. If the overall market is going down, is it hard for an upside trade to win? How many of you guys have been taking upside trades here in the last few weeks and struggled to get them even to move enough to make any money? See, when the majority of the market's moving down, it's difficult for trades to find enough momentum to move up. So people buy these long trades against the trend of the market, and they don't work out, and they wonder why. Because they're fighting the direction of the market. Move with the direction of the market and respect the direction of the market. Work with the direction of the market. Stop predicting and just follow. And it gets way easier. 
So guys, if you found anything here that was helpful, I want you to understand I do this kind of training 10 hours a week <laughs> in the Right Way Options room from 11 a.m. Eastern to, to 1 p.m. Eastern every single day. I'll answer any question you have for me. I'll cover any subject and I'll repeat it over and over and over. Confirm that for me, guys, in Right Way Options. Would you guys confirm that? I'd, I'd never back away from any question and I'll repeat it a hundred times if that's what it takes to get somebody to understand it. I do it every day. Okay. If you find something here with right way options or find something with hit and run candlesticks, it doesn't bother me if I, I mean, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I wouldn't expect to be. Okay. Get involved with this. You know, pick up a, um, um, a trial membership. Trial membership doesn't cost you much. And, and it's a full membership for a 30-day period. You, I mean, you have 30 days to evaluate whether this is right for you or not. But for a lot of folks, what they've found here in Right Way Options and Hit Run Candlesticks, they found a family of people, of like-minded people that are working together. And honestly, guys, that's the best thing about the group. It's not me. It's not me. It's the group of us, all of us as a team working together to improve as traders. Okay. That's what we want. We want that improvement. Now, I want to give you guys a, a, just a heads up clue, and this is counterproductive, but it, you know, um, I like to say that you may not like what I say, but I will tell you the truth. <laughs> the truth is, guys, um, on Thursday, um, that'll be my last day this week, and then I'm going to be gone for a week. So if you want to sign up, you know, give it a week. <laughs> okay, so you can get your 30, full 30 days worth of the trade. Now, I know there's some, probably somebody in the background there going, what in the world are you telling people? But it's the truth. I'm not going to be around for a week. Okay, going to take a little bit of vacation time and I'm going to be gone. So get signed up before... Um, What's the date? Get signed up before Monday the 27th. Okay? With with right way options or hit and run candlesticks, okay? Get signed up and I'll be here and you guys can ask me any question that you want. Okay? And we'll go over this stuff over and over again and I will post the next trade that comes up as soon as it's available. Whether it be a bull put credit spread, a bear call credit spread, and uh, you know whatever it is we trade, long call, short put, whatever it is, I'll use any strategy that's in the book as long as it's a good quality trade. Okay. So if you want to learn this kind of stuff and learn options this way with a price action background that puts gives you an edge, give us a look. We'd love to help you and we'd love to have you as part of the team and love to help you get on the right track and start making money. It's always it's always very rewarding when we hear from people like Carol. Carol Rob was talking about how her trading has turned around. She hasn't been with Right Way Options all that long. She studied real hard. I know because I worked with her in private coaching. But it's turning her trading around. That is very rewarding stuff for me. It's it's the thing that gets me up every day. Um, it's just helping that next trader, you know, get over the hump. Because I, I remember how difficult that was, how frustrating and, and horrible that is, that trading purgatory, okay? 
There's a time period, see, I don't know what that time period is. You can go try it and find out. Um, the system will lock you out if you've been a trial and then just take, we don't let you do unlimited trials. Um, six months between trials, thank you, Ed. But come on over and check us out. Um, we're different. Um, like I said, you may not like what I say, but I'm going to tell you, I'm only going to tell you the stuff I can back up. I'm only going to tell you the things that I know to be true. Okay. I, I use it. If you ask me about a trade, I, it's kind of a joke, but I mean it. If you ask me about a trade that you're interested in, be prepared for the answer. <laughs> because if I don't like the chart, I'm going to tell you. Okay, that doesn't mean that that's not the right trade for you or something like that, but I'm you ask me, so I'm going to tell you. I, I don't sugarcoat stuff. I don't help people when I when I just give them lip service. Um, okay. <laughs> TD, I can't believe you remember that story. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't end well. <laughs> so guys, um, hope to see you around the trading room. Um, hope to see you um, um, uh, pick up on some of this information here. By the way, you can keep keep in touch if you just um, you know become a subscriber to the YouTube channel. You can keep in touch if you can't afford to do this for a while. You can stay in touch with us there. So thank you guys. Yeah, I'm going to be heading out here for my my dad's going to turn 80 and I haven't seen him. haven't even been in the same st state with him for about 12 years. So figured I better get that done. Um, I want to wish you guys all a, a wonderful evening. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to me. Um, I hope you pick something up here that could be helpful with your trading. Um, Get yourself a set of rules. And, and if you don't understand what I talked about tonight, come over, become a trial. I mean, and, and I'll give you the rules. I will spoon feed this stuff to you as much as I can to help you understand why this is important and how this can change your, your trading life. Okay? And please understand, it's not about me. It, it, it's not about it's not because I'm special it's because I've worked really really hard to just let the market show me where it wants to go so I can go with it I follow it okay so everyone have a wonderful evening thanks so much for being here appreciate you let me rant on and on here for this long you guys are awesome I'll see you right way options folks first thing tomorrow morning with a morning market prep video um, wish you guys all the best, and I will talk to you all very soon. Take care, guys.